Now we're going to expand what we just have seen to uh, two dimensions. So uh, we've seen yesterday that we uh, can have 1D, 2D or 3D grids, and they all work in a very similar way. So uh, as the question was, why do I add an integer at the end? This is because I'm uh, obtaining the first index of a vector. If I leave out the integer, I will actually uh, get a vector as a return type, which contains uh, the uh, index in every dimension. So uh, I have an index in dimension 0, I have an index in dimension 1, and so on. However, and this is uh, maybe a bit counterintuitive, uh, the more dimensions you have, uh, uh, you need to be aware of that, for example, in a 2D grid, the Y dimension will be uh, at index 0 and the X dimension will be, will be at dimension 1. This is similar to how um, multidimensional areas work in C. So, for example, if I have a 2D grid and I call the get index functions, I will get a vector as a return value, which contains two indices with the Y index at position 0 and the X index at position 1. In a similar way, if I, if I had to have a 2D grid and I call get index and put in the 0 at the end, I will get back the Y index and not the X index. You can also compute this 2D index yourself, just as you would in the 1D case. You can either done this by just multiplying the vectors they get out of the API functions, or you can do this uh, individually for each uh, index in, inside the vector. So this is what we're going to do now in our Hello World example. The first thing we have to do is enable 2D dimensionality uh, on the host side. So heading back to our source code. At the top of the main function, we have this uh, using dim declaration. All we have to do here is just put in a 2. As we're using this uh, type definition later and uh, it automatically gets transferred in this way. And we have to uh, adapt our thread hierarchy to the 2D case. So um, what did I do here? Okay, so this is the way that is the, uh, this is done. This way, so we are having uh, two threads, uh, two blocks in the y dimension, and four blocks in the x dimension. So that's what we're going to put in here. And the others basically stay the same. We just need to declare them in every dimension now. So we're going to this way, and also. this way. That's all we need to change on the host. Jan, and also the type is now auto, right? Because it's vector. Ah, yeah, thank you. Is that. OK, uh, that's all for the host. So uh, next, we're going to head back to the kernel and now obtain our 2D index. First, we're going to do this individually by uh, first obtaining the Y index for the grid thread index and then the one in the, for the X dimension. So heading back up, we're going to delete this part here. this um, I really need to learn this better oh, yeah so this is for the x dimension
this is for x. Now we're going to change our printf a little bit. Print out our new coordinates. Okay, this shouldn't produce a compile error. Now we have a nice 2D grid. You don't have to do this uh, for each index individually. You can also just use uh, the vector approach, which is what we're going to do for the uh, blocks. So they work in a pretty similar way. The only difference that we're now uh, having is that we're going to obtain the vectors directly and we're not going to uh, go to the, uh, over the indices first. Type. Uh, did we define this already here? Oh no, so we're going to read this this way. Dimensional, and we're having 32 bit index type. Having the uh, index. This gives us a 2D vector which contains our uh, thread indices inside the block. And we also want to have uh, index for our block on the grid. We'll comment out this line here. Then we can just print out our new indices. So now we have to do a little indexing here. So we're first going over the uh, block thread index at position zero, block thread index at position one. Oh, this is a typo here, it should be a grid block, block index. Now, if we uh, rebuild this, now get our uh, first our thread uh, block local thread indices inside the block, and then we get the coordinates of the block on the two D grid. Okay, to sum this up, n-dimensional grids are very similar to 1D grids. Uh, the only pitfall you need to have in mind is that the index ordering is reversed. Uh, it's a bit counterintuitive at first. Uh, you can obtain those indices and extents through API calls or just by computing them, just as you would on the 1D grid. And n-dimensional blocks basically work the same way.